Welcome, everybody, to Both Sides of the Conversation. I'm John Henry, Executive Director. Today is Thursday, so you know what that means. <laughs> Another Educational Thursday segment to all of our followers, to all of the folks that are just tuning in, our folks on LinkedIn. Every Thursday at 7 p.m., we are here to intentionally educate the community. This is our Educational Thursday segment. It's been a hit. We have tonight a phenomenal guest that is coming back. Community wanted to hear more. We talk about financial literacy. We talk about things that we can learn, tools, tips, so that we can change our financial well-being. We have a phenomenal, phenomenal brother that's going to come on and talk about wealth, money, asset protection, some of the things that we need to know, especially in these economic challenging times. I think it's important that we continue to learn tricks and tools uh, to stay ahead um, in this uh, season that we are going through. So many things are happening. I'm happy to be back. I know y'all haven't seen me community last week. I was out. I was down. I was sick. The flu, it hit me hard. I was out. Missed all my shows, events, people calling me. Thank you to all the community folks that reached out and said, Bishop, you all right? Where you been? I've been down under the weather. I'm just happy uh, this week to get back out and be somewhat normal and back in the community and doing all the things that we do to help impact community. There's a lot of things going on. So we got a lot of talk about a lot of things coming up. My soundboard is done. I don't know. Some people in the chat that was trying to blow up my soundboard. I think I blew my soundboard up. No more. I got to get another one. All right. No, no, no funny stuff tonight. It's all business tonight uh, for our educational Thursday. We are always excited uh, to bring sauce information to our community that sometimes community members and folks in our community don't get. So we continue to reach out to folks and bring some of that information to the community so that they can have it. And it's important, but it's a lot going on. It's cold. It's winter. They say that there's snow coming to the mountaintops of California. People are crashing all over the place. I don't know. There's a storm here, but we are still here. We are here to do another great uh, show today. Sister Io is out. Please, y'all, hey, you know what? Things is going on, come We just need to take a deep breath and just take a second to say, Lord, <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but protect me. There's so much going on. Um, folks are going through it, and we just got to keep uplifting the people. That's what we will continue to do here at both sides of the conversation. But without further ado, the co-host, the man, the voice, the rev is here. Brother Mark, what's going on, King? Well, what's going on, community? As always, glad to be here for another educational Thursday on both sides of the conversation. Uh, but Bishop, man, it's good to see you, bro. I'm glad you're back on your feet, feeling better, man. It ain't the same without you. Uh, but we did hold things down for you in your absence, man. The community absolutely loves you. And we thank you, man, for continuing to stand up and be the pillar that you are in the community, brother. So excited about the show, man. This brother we got tonight, he's sharp, been here before. So he's got some powerful information. Looking forward to another educational Thursday for the community. Man, thank you. Always well put together, Mark. And thank you to the team, to everybody that continue to hold down the platform. When I'm out, you know, doing community stuff, working with community, dealing with a lot, there's definitely a lot going on. And we're trying to continue to stay connected with the people, uplift the people, be the voices of the people as we continue to work to change the narrative and make things happen. And so for all of you just tuning in, maybe it's your first time, check us out. We're on the air three times a week. Unless folks cancel things happen, it does. I know Tuesday we wasn't here for our hidden gym, sir. I was sad because I was like, I was ready to come back. I was like, oh, no hidden gym. Hey, but we'll keep doing our part. Every Tuesday we have a hidden gym segment. We are looking for our business owners. We are looking for our nonprofit executives. We're looking for folks in the community that are doing positive things to impact. You go and nominate somebody. Tell them. We need to know. We don't want these folks hidden. We want the community to know, hey, these are the people that's making change. These are the businesses that are representing the black and brown community that are doing phenomenal things. Go support them. We need them. If that is you or if you know someone who has a business, get them on our Hidden Gym. Go to our website, sign them up, get them on as Hidden Gym. And every Thursday, y'all know we're here to educate the community, bring some information, some wisdom, reaching out to these phenomenal folks that have gyms, information um, that's uh, transformative and change folks' lives and things of that nature. So every Thursday we are here. And then every Sunday, we have our Sunday conversation. They're a little interesting sometimes. I don't know. But every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we are here, up living, having conversation with community. Um, we're talking about health this entire month as we continue to highlight minorities' health this month. There are so many things. We talk about the black and brown community. We talk about mental health, all of the health that impacts us. Um, we have to have some conversations. We have to do our part. We will do our part here at both sides of the conversation to keep 
highlighting those disparities, those issues that continue to impact our community. We'll talk about it. We'll get the professional folks. We'll get the resources and we'll make sure that we get that out to the community because that's what we're here for. Um, but we're looking forward to this Sunday's conversation as we continue to push these conversations forward because we know through communication, a healing process begins. Things start to change when we talk about it, get it off our chest. And that's what we're going to do here at Both Sides of the Conversation. With that being said, I'm going to jump into a little bit of the news. Oh, yeah, the news is just something else. There's been a lot going on in the news. Um, you know, I was sick last week. A boat crashed into a bridge in Baltimore. Things are happening. Bombs are raining out the sky. I don't know. There's a lot going on, Mark. Uh, but I'll give you, you all a little bit of what's going on here locally and beyond. And we'll let Brother Mark get into all of the events and things that's going on. So community folks, pay attention. There's a lot of free events, a lot of impactful events coming up. Pay attention. Write them down. Go check them out. Get a part of the community. See what's going on. With that being said, San Francisco police um, are still trying to hope to uh, solve uh, uh, a double homicide that took place um, on the anniversary of uh, shooting that took place with two people dead in the park. Um, they are still looking for the killer. They are offering a two hundred fifty thousand dollar reward. Um, you know, it is tragic. Uh, when these shootings happen this past week, we lost another young brother to gun violence in our community, 17 years old. Um, and it's just sad, especially when you know the families, when you know the alleged shooters. It's just it's tragic community. Um, this gun violence is tearing our communities apart, hurting our families. Uh, we have to continue to do more uh, to work together to find a way uh, to end or slow down this gun violence that's taking place in our, com our community. We know with the economic challenges and some of the things that's going on, there has been an increase. Um, but I just pray and uh, continue to hope that we all can continue to work together to deal with anger management, conflict management, things that we can do uh, together as a community to curb some of this violence um, in the community. Also in the news, automated speed enforcement cameras are coming sooner to the streets of San Francisco than expected. Um, 33 of the cameras will be installed, planned by 2025. Um, these cameras they are putting up to bring public safety. Um, as you all know, in San Francisco, there has been a number of pedestrian deaths over the year from folks speeding, not paying attention, texting and driving. Um, these speed cameras are going up. There's about 500 of them in total. That's going to be going up across the uh, city. They're going to have a pilot program. Um, but basically, they are giving tickets without the police being there. If the camera catch you going more than 11 miles per hour over the speed limit, you will be hit with a traffic ticket, a point on your record, all kind of stuff. So I don't know how this pilot program is going to work. Um, you know, they still haven't released where all of the cameras are going. Uh, can't wait to find. We know that sometimes in the black and brown community is over policing. And uh, we know um, there's challenges with that. So we'll see how this all goes down in the play. We'll keep you up. We'll be at the police commission hearings. We'll be tuning in to see what's going on. And we'll keep the community abreast of what's going on. But community, slow down out there, okay? Slow down. It's raining. Be safe and pay attention. No texting and driving, all right, young people? Uh, with that being said, also what happened in the news, the largest cash heist burglary uh, in L.A., uh, someone – or some folks stole $30 million in an elaborate heist. I don't know, too many people are watching Ocean Eleven or movies or something, uh, but these executed one of the largest cash heists in LA history, still up to $30 million from a San, uh, for, uh, San Fernando Valley uh, money storage facility on Easter Sunday. I guess they felt blessed. They wanted to do it on Easter Sunday. There was some money in the egg somewhere, but uh, the thieves uh, came in through the roof um, as LA and a LAPD and FBI is investigating, they feel that um, there's some people that, are, that may be on the inside working to help this crew do it. But again, it did happen. $30 million. I don't know. These movies is making people inspired to take risks. Um, but that did happen on Easter weekend. Um, so again, uh, the FBI and LAPD is investigating. Also, the bird flu pandemic in the future, the uh, EU is warning of potential spread to humans due to lack of of uh, defense vaccinations. I was just sick last week. I don't know. Something's going on, something in the air. This bug has been touching all types of folks. So many folks I've been knowing been down. It's not COVID, but people are getting uh, this bug. It puts you down for a couple of days to a week. Uh, so again, community, continue to wash your hands, continue to safe distance, continue to do the things that you need to do. Take your vitamins, take some vitamin C, get some rest. Okay, because if you don't get rest, I don't know. I think that was part of my problem, moving too much. Hey, when your body's telling you to sit down, you got to sit down. So with that being said, enough of the news. We got all kind of news, but that's enough of the news. But Brother Mark, talk to the people. Tell them what's going on. What's happening around the city? Absolutely, Bishop. Let me go ahead and get to some of the events going on around the city. 
And our first event, the Housing Authority of the County of Almeda. Housing wait list closes tomorrow, April 5th at 11.59 Pacific Standard Time. There are no paper applications, so apply online only at www.haca.net. Click apply now. And experience standing tall, an evening of powerful solo performances celebrating Black resilience through art, dance, and history on Friday, April 5th from 5.30 to 8 p.m. at the Commonwealth Club. Featuring works by Algernon, K.C. Bryant, and more. Tickets are available. See the link below. And join YCD, Bridging the Gap, and Bay Area Desperados for WAGA 19, the War Against Gun Activity 19-Year Anniversary. On April 13th, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Bayview Opera House. All ages are welcome for live entertainment and food. See the details below. And celebrate at the inaugural Father-Daughter Dance, April 14th at 3 p.m. at Ruth Williams Opera House at 4705 3rd Street in San Francisco. Special guest and free formal attire for the first 50 pair. Tickets are available at the link below. And register for Drip Fest at the African American Art and Culture Complex on April 13th. Health and wellness, music, food, and fun. It's a free event from 12 to 5 p.m., so don't miss out. Register at Eventbrite. And SF Batco presents Sign My Name to Freedom, a musical about Betty Reed Soskin's life. The show runs from March 29th through April 13th at Z Space in San Francisco. Tickets are available at sfbatco.org. And the African-American Art and Culture Complex is hiring, seeking a facilities technician and financing and accounting manager. Apply at the website seen below. And explore Sankofa Days and the Bay during San Francisco's Climate Week 2024 from April 21st through the 27th. Dive into history. Understand your future. Its free admission is available Visit the link below for more details. And apply for Bayview Legacy Foundation scholarships and stipends are available. You can apply from March 15th through April 29th. Details are at the link below. And mark your calendar for Hip Hop TV's first annual Fashion and Art Gala 2024, honoring Chantel Hurden on April 27th from 6 to 9 p.m. All proceeds will benefit Chantel's children. More details are to come. And join us at the CCSF Ocean Campus for the Connect 2024 Open House and Resource Fair on April 27th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Explore, engage, and empower. Are you a high school student? Graduating senior? Apply for the Both Sides of the Conversation $2,500 Community Engagement Scholarship. The deadline is April 30th, 2024. To apply, visit the link below for more details. And gain financial aid through Chu Chi USA Scholars for High School Grads and Undergrads. Selected on the basis of their financial need academic achievement, and community involvement. For more details on how to apply, see the link below. And join the Neighborhood Emergency Response Team for full training on March 26th through May the 1st from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the SF Fire Department's Division of Training. Tickets are available at Eventbrite. And California artist. Apply for 2024 State Art Grants. Opportunities are open until June the 6th. Details are at the link below. And attend Estate Planning 101 at Hera, second Thursday every month from February 8th through June the 13th from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. at Booker T. Washington Community Service Center. Registration is required. 
For more details, see the phone number and the link below. And join Rodessa Jones for Life on the Swerve, workshops on self-love and transformation on Saturdays from March 16th through June the 14th at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Ruth Williams Opera House. Register now. And Opportunities for All offers career exploration and workforce development for San Francisco youth and young adults ages 13 to 24 living or studying in San Francisco. For more details, visit the link below. And the 2024 Summer Opportunities Program and camps for kids kindergarten through eight are there over 160 options for learning, engagement, safety, and health. Help them get ready for fall school. For more details, click the link below. And Dreamkeeper Initiatives Kids Summer Camp at Prince Hall Computer Learning Center for grades kindergarten through eighth for free admission through June 10th through August 2nd. For more information, call the phone number below. And DCYF Youth Opportunities, ages 14 to 24. Will you be able to explore opportunities for youth portal, for summer jobs, internships, and more in San Francisco? Also, for ages 14 to 17, watch out for paid summer job openings starting in March. And the SOA City is Mine Tech and Sports Camp, April 2nd through November the 26th will be located at various times and locations covering ages from 7 to 16. For more details, see the link below. And APRI is hiring a Community Innovation Lab site manager. To apply, see the link below. And Kids in the City presents Hair 101 Workshop on Saturdays from 1 to 3 p.m. at the Chase Center. For youth ages 7 to 17, where you can learn about unique hair, the supplies will be provided. Registration information is below. And join the SECC at Hungry Cafe from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. for co-working eatery and social space at the Southeast Community Center. And SFOEWD and the Renaissance Entrepreneurship Center offer business support services for small businesses and entrepreneurs in Bayview and Fillmore. See the phone number and the link below for more details. And Minding Our Black-Owned Business Initiative by BWOPA Tile honors Black women entrepreneurs. Nominate a favorite Black woman-owned business. For more details on how to do so, see the link below. And the University of San Francisco's new Community Counseling and Wellness Center provides 12 weeks of free therapy for San Francisco residents over 18 facing barriers to care. For more details, email the link below. And Dreamkeeper Initiative's Senior Home Repair Program offers up to $50,000 for givable loan to low to moderate income seniors and or disabled homeowners in distressed San Francisco neighborhoods. For more information, see the link below. And the SF Human Rights Commission holds regular bi-monthly meetings on the second and fourth Thursday of each month at 5 p.m. in San Francisco City Hall Room 416. You can attend in person or via Zoom. And Fathers to Founders Child Support Clinics are every Tuesday and Wednesday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at 232 6th Street in San Francisco. You can get guidance on child support debt reductions, license holds, custody, and visitation rights. For more information, call the phone number below for an appointment. And Dreamkeeper Initiative's Down Payment Assistance Loan Program offers up to $500,000 for down payment assistance and up to $30,000 for closing costs. To get connected with housing counselors, lenders, and realtors, see the information in the link below. And Walters Wellness Group hosts SIP Paint and Center 
every first, third, and fifth Friday, where you can unwind and set the tone for your weekend, fueled by tea, creativity, and grounding. Hosted by Dr. Kathea Walters and team. For more details, see the link below. And join Fathers to Founders for Fatherhood Reimagined Therapy Group every Tuesday from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Food is provided. For RSVP and information, see the phone number below. And APRI hosts youth workshops and job referrals with resume building, skills, internships, networking, and community service hours. For more details, see the phone number below. And Fillmore's Friday Night Market, every Friday from 4 to 9 p.m. on O'Farrell Street between Fillmore and Steiner. Come out for live music, food, vendors, dominoes, prizes, and fun. Vendor booths are still available. For more details, see the link below. An ongoing vaccination site still offers the COVID-19 boosters and the monkeypox antiviral pill treatments. For times and locations, see the details below. And the community living room offers free breakfast and grab-and-go lunch Monday through Friday at the City of Hope Cafe. For more details, see the link and in the information below. And the SF Office of Financial Empowerment offers free, confidential, one-on-one -on -one smart money coaching. Get financial guidance in English or Spanish and available to anyone who's living or working in San Francisco. For more details, see the phone number and the link below. And come out and be a mentor in SFUSD's Mentoring for Success. Sign up to volunteer as an individual or group mentor district-wide. Make an impact. Sign up at the link below. And would you like to promote your business, nonprofit, or community impact? Well, sign up to be one of our hidden gems or come share your expertise on an educational Thursday or also be a panelist on one of our Sunday conversations. And you can also keep up with both sides of the conversations, latest shows, and community outreach events. Follow us on all social media platforms, where you can also subscribe to our newsletter at bsotc.org. And both sides of the conversation welcomes volunteers to come join our mission to uplift and support the community. Make a positive impact. Become a volunteer today. You can email us at hr at bsotc.org. And also both sides of the conversation invite your support for our podcast and community engagement. Please explore any of our donation links because your generous donations will greatly aid us in enhancing our programming. And we would like to take this time to acknowledge the Dreamkeeper Initiative, and all of its support for both sides of the conversation's programming, as well as San Francisco's diverse Black communities. To learn more, see the link below. And also tune in for our upcoming show on our Sunday conversation coming up on April the 7th, where we'll be discussing the impact of environmental factors on health. And also next Tuesday, we'll be looking to highlight more businesses on our hidden gym. Man, you go, that community. Being said, thank you, brother. You know, that's a lot of information, community. I hope, I hope you all are taking the information down, utilizing it uh, to get involved, find out what's going on, because we are tired of hearing folks talking about, I didn't know this was going on. I didn't know this resource was there. Okay, there's some resources, some opportunities out there. Go back, hit my wire on the YouTube. You can see all of them. Go to our website, uh, check out our newsletter. All this information is there. We want to make sure that we get it out for our sponsors, for our community folks. Make sure that we get it out to the community so you all know what's going on. A lot of great information, um, but that's just what it is. We got work to do. We got information that's out there. We need folks uh, to get involved and engaged. It's some resources, some help. And I know we need it more than ever in this time. With that being said, Brother Mark, did you wet your whistle enough? Let's go ahead and get this educational presenter up here tonight. He's been waiting patiently. He's been here. Community, phenomenal brother. 
Absolutely. Well, Mr. Saladin Akbar was born in New Orleans, Louisiana, and raised in Los Angeles, California. Has over 20 years of experience in healthcare, and he's focused on mental illness, substance abuse, incarceration, homelessness, and he's worked with senior ex offenders. His studies at UC Berkeley covered medical and psychological foundations for chemical dependency. And as an instructor, Mr. Saladin prepares students for certification in California. He's married to a wonderful lady and he has shifted from health care to wealth care. Driven by his passion for helping people, he has held a financial professional license now for the past five years and he is dedicated to aiding families in comprehending the intricacies of money management and how it works. So with no other hesitation, let's present to some and introduce to others, Mr. Saladin Akbar. That's me. What's going on, good brother? I we heard my to, name. <laughs> we happy to have you back. Um, you know, every ounce of information uh, is just important for our community. Some folks have information. Some folks miss some stuff. And uh, we're just happy to have you back because we know something tonight. There's some gym, some information that you're going to be able to wake somebody up with something. It's needed. Um, we know that sometimes to get this information, people pay thousands and thousands of dollars. But tonight, community. Brother Akbar is here, both sides of the conversation to give you some of these gems. Go ahead, brother. Talk to the people. Hey, and you know, I am uh, absolutely honored, you know, for, uh, you know, what you all are doing in the community. You know, so we don't want to overlook that, uh, you know, at all, because this is phenomenal. And I already know the legacy that you guys are leaving behind, the impact that you guys are having in the community, the influence, right? It's remarkable, man. And so, you know, it's like, you guys have already impacted somebody's grandchildren who haven't been born yet. That's how powerful I'm looking at this thing that you guys are doing in the community and how you are making sure that the information is being disseminated, you know, in places that it needs to go. So I'm honored and I'm thankful that you allowed me opportunity because what I'm talking about, right, is some information that I know that working people are not privy to. Because I, I worked already for 43 years and I knew nothing about the information that I'm going to share, you know, with your audience tonight, you know, with the community, because it's necessary. And the things that we talk about, you know, are so necessary in the impact that it can have on the generations to come. Learning how hard is you working? Who is your money working for? And so... I resigned from my position, you know, in, in a company that I, I absolutely, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I just relish, you know, the opportunity to work there. You know, I, I went from, you know, uh, part time, uh, on call, right, counselor, you know, supervisor, manager, you know, and that's where I left as a manager. But in, the, in that process of learning, I was realizing that there was something missing. Because we were we worked, it, it was like first responders, right? Dealing with people with critical issues and, and demands, we were there. And what was happening often is the funding wasn't there. And so regardless of the service, that was a demand, right? There was no resources to accommodate that. And so what happened eventually, we had to, you know, uh, discontinue the service, right, lay off the people who were providing the service and so on and so forth. It was a ripple effect. And as that was happening, it was impacting families because often people was relying on their job as the, as the livelihood to take care of their family. You get laid off because funding was cut because somebody didn't think it was significant enough to fund it this year. They did last year, but they're not going to do it this year. It just was crazy, man. And so I was in that mindset all the time of thinking, man, why aren't I in a position to do better than what I'm doing? And I appreciate the fact that I, you know, I was in the trenches. You know, I, I was able to capture some of the things before they happened. We call it preventative measures. But the reality is there, I felt so um, disempowered, so helpless in that we couldn't help people that came needing the help that we were set up to be able to provide. And it was, it was crazy, man. You know, and so that happened to me. And then just think about all of that that was going on in my life. I was, you know, moving right along in time, you know, in reality. 
right? I've been on the job, you know, one year, and then it turned out to be 20 years. And there was a time when I was 40 and I looked around, I was 60. And and, and this, this becomes an issue because people get so caught up into the day-to-day -day activity, just trying to manage and make things happen and move it from, and before you know it, you're in another dimension, man. Right? And then the realization comes, man, it's time to retire off a job. Right? But if you don't have the right funds, right, you might as well keep on working. But everybody can't keep working because some people are not able. So listen, I just wanted to give you guys a little background on me and how I think now outside of the box. Because for all my life, I was that person that traditionally just went along with what my mama said. And I remember what my mama used to say. She used to say, there ain't but one thing worse than an old fool. Right? And then she'll say, an old broke fool. <laughs> she used to say that to some of my father's friends, right? <laughs> but, you know, I think about that. You know, as I'm looking at life from a different lens now, you know, and, you know, oh, I, I was a fool for a lot of years. Not, not because I chose to be a fool. I was foolish and not realizing what I was responsible for. I was responsible for my own financial development. And I had put it in the hands of somebody that didn't really have vested interest in me as a person and my family. And so I'm looking back now on the confidence that I put in somebody who didn't care that much about me, really. I mean, they had a job to do, but they didn't have no personal care for me, no personal relationship to make sure that I was going to do well financially. And I realize now when I look back on it, that was my responsibility. Why didn't I do something different? Well, I'm going to tell you why. I didn't know. And what I'm here tonight to do is make sure that people won't have the reason that I had. I didn't know. Well, tonight, you know, if you can share my first PowerPoint. Yeah, yeah we're going we're gonna to bring up your PowerPoint. But I want to I want to say this, and I'm glad you, you know, you put it in that perspective. Um, because we know a lot of folks work for these companies and the HR folks. They're not talking to you about the investment. They're just moving your money around. And I know some folks feel like, you know, I know we got a pension. We got a retirement. We have this stuff. Uh, but they're really not knowing what's going on with their money and how to utilize it and, and, and to manage it. You know, um, they just put money in there and they don't really know. So I'm really happy that you, you put it in that perspective um, because these tools are important. You know, even if you do have a job that provides a 401k or a retirement plan or benefits, uh, really understanding the questions to ask and how to follow up. Um, with your HR department and to get the insight so that you can go and take a look at the investments and where the money is going, what type of portfolios that they're putting your money in and things of that nature is so important um, because, again, um, it is your money. It is your time you're putting in. And I think information and education is so important. And, I, and, and I'm happy uh, that you are here again. I see Richard Bill backstage. We'll get through the PowerPoint presentation and bring them up. Um, but this is the information. So community, buckle your seat. Get your notepad out. Get your ear listenings out. What they say, <laughs> listen twice as more than you speak. You might get something tonight, okay? Listening tonight might determine how much financial wealth you produce in the future. Uh, but we want to make sure that we bring this to the community. We don't want our young people working for 30, 40 years and not understanding the importance of their retirement, their investments, and how to make sure that you're not just working for the money, but the money's working for you. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and pull up your PowerPoint Absolutely. presentation there up on the screen, right. brother. And yeah. uh, you just let us know next slide. And Mark, is one of the folks that get it to the next slide for you, Ken. No worries, man. No worries. I appreciate I appreciate what you just said, too. And you know what? <laughs> you know, you you are you are thought provoking. You know, I, I like I like that, you know, because that's who you, you are thought provoking. And so this is what I want to talk a little bit about, you know, just to share, you know, enough information. You know, just to broaden the perspective around how we look at things and how we were taught to believe without any investigation. All right, I tell you a story about, you know, they had the, they had the Thanksgiving dinner and the, the turkey and everything. But as as Mama was preparing the, the turkey, 
one of her children was uh, watching. And she said, Mama, why do you cut off the turkey legs and put them on in the pan with the turkey? You know, and she said, oh, that's just, that's what your grandmama used to do. Grandmama's in the other room. Child wouldn't ask, Grandmama, why do you tur cut off the turkey legs and put it in the pan instead of putting the whole turkey in? Oh, that's how my mama always did it. Right? And so come to find out the reason that the great great grandmother did it, because back then the pan wasn't large enough to hold the turkey. So she had to cut the legs off to make the turkey fit in the pan. That idea was passed down without people even knowing why they do what they do. And so we just want to broaden the perspective and, and have people start questioning it. Why is it that I do some of the things that I do? Well, my mama said, what my teacher said, what my cousin told me, and so on and so forth. So chaos is the result of poor planning related to three events, sickness, death, and retirement. We will talk a little bit about each one. And hopefully in this conversation, your perspective will be broadened or at least your ideas can be challenged, not by me, but by you. And so if I can, if I can have the next slide, please. And it's about sickness. Now, when you, when you talk about sickness, statistics shows that large numbers of Americans may become terminally, critically, or chronically ill. Now, this is, this is all written out, right? This is an expectation. That's why pharmaceuticals are doing so well right now. This is an expectation that people are going to get sick. Right? And the medical journal says every 40 seconds, someone's going to have a stroke. Now, you know, the medical term for stroke is uh, a brain attack. You're not getting enough blood in your brain or your brain might be bleeding. Either way, it's affecting the way your brain operates. So it shuts down functions of your body. And so a stroke, you know, can cause death. Right? There, was, there was a guy, man, uh, 65 years old, famous, right? Isaac Hayes. He had a stroke and died at 65 years old. Now, he wasn't expecting that to happen. And when you, when you think about maybe some people that you know, what happened to them in that 40 seconds, every 40 seconds, someone's going to have a stroke. Do you know there's millions of Americans walking around right now not anticipating, not expecting to have a stroke? But they will. Every 34 seconds, someone has a heart attack. Wow. Now we think, think about that. Every 34 seconds, someone has a heart attack. Now, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that there is not one of those people who've experienced that was expecting that to happen. Not one. It was living. Isaac Hayes was living his life. Come to find, they told, I was told, now I don't have any personal information, but I was told he was on a treadmill. In other words, he was conscious of his exercises and still he had a stroke and died. The average cost of a severe heart attack, including direct and indirect costs, is about $1 million. How would that impact your financial livelihood if a loved one suddenly become one of those 34 second individuals who was afflicted with a heart attack? One in two men and one in three women would develop cancer in their lifetime. Now, these are real life situations. What happens if this happens to your family? Are you capable financially to handle that burden? The question is, are you financially prepared? Who in your family must adjust a lifestyle to take care of you. Because I know there's loved ones. It's not going to sit around idly and allow you to suffer 
all by yourself. Somebody's going to make some adjustments. I know I would. If somebody was critically ill in my family, I would have to make the necessary adjustments. I would have to sacrifice some of the things that I normally do. Why? Because a loved one has fallen ill and they lack all the resources of necessary, unavailable to them. So I got to extend mine. That's just a given. So thinking about that sickness and all the unexpected things that happen as a result of it. And if I can have the next slide, please, we're going to talk a little bit about what? Death. Now, you know, it's true. Nobody is getting out alive. None of us. Right. But will your family inherit a legacy or a liability? That's the question. A legacy is when your wealth in the form of memories, money, property, everything that we worked all of our lives and is transferred to our children and our grandchildren. Because the scripture says a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Are you setting up to be able to do that? A liability, on the other hand, is when you work hard most of your life, die, and then your family realize that you have been working with the wrong blueprint. Now your family inherits all your debts. You had a business that you thought you was going to transfer to your family. And guess what happens? They inherit your loan. They inherit the tax. They... It's a mess. And so what happens? They want to sell that business as soon as they possibly can. How would you like to be remembered? As one who left a legacy? Or one who left a liability? Like my mama said. Ain't nothing worse than a fool. Than an old broke fool. Let me add the next slide, please. And then we come to retirement. And this is a critical place because I know from experience getting caught up with all the activities that goes on from day to day, right? We come out of high school and we go to college and we get these degrees and somewhere around 26 years old, we threw with college, we got a master's degree and we're now seeking our career path. 26, 27 years old, we're coming out of college, we're coming off the university campuses and we are excited for life. We was able to have a student loan, not thinking that we was going to have to pay that loan off when we was excited about all the education and the careers that we had in front of us. And now we got some credit cards to go with that student loan. And now we're 27, 28 years old and we got a lady in our lives and we're thinking about now getting married. And as we're thinking about getting married, we're thinking about purchasing a home, having children, and so on and so forth. Now, at some point, after we're doing all the things that just was laid out for us to do, go to school, get a couple of degrees, get a good job, get married, start a family, right? Uh, become a homeowner. And somewhere in that time span, we're about 40 years old, just getting it together. 40 years old, life is good. Never once really concentrated or thought about a retirement plan. What's going to happen after the sunset? Well, we want you to know this, that retirement is not an age. It is a financial independence number. And we have all been thinking of retirement as an age because we can't access our money until the age of 59 and a half without penalties. This is a huge contributor why people think retirement is an age event because Social Security, we have no access to it. Our traditional retirement accounts, we have no access to it. So we're thinking now when we get access to our money, it must be in that area of retirement. And do you know millions of Americans are retiring and realizing 
they had the wrong blueprint. Retirement can happen at any age if you're financially independent. If you have those numbers in place that will sustain and maintain your lifestyle. So when you retire, you shouldn't have to decrease the value of your living conditions. When you retire, you should actually be able to increase the value of your living conditions with the right information. You can do that. And I just want to introduce you to some simple IRS codes that's been around for decades that I knew nothing about. And chances are you may not be familiar with them either. The first one, look up the IRS code. You can look it up, right? This is public information, right? It just was kept from working people. But this is an IRS code. It allows your money. 72E allows your money to grow tax-free. Now, I know we got these tax deferred accounts, but they're the IRS code that allows your money to grow tax free. There's another IRS code, 7702A, how you can access your money tax free without penalties, without waiting on 59 and a half. It's your money. You should have access to it whenever you need your money. And then there's another IRS code. 101A, how you transfer your money tax-free. And what I was talking about, small business owners, uh, leaving, a, leaving a company to their children and then realizing that it was just riddled with debt. Millions of working Americans believe that they will die in a lower tax bracket when retired. Millions of Americans believe that's what they were taught. That's what we were told about these tax deferred accounts that we have with our employers. You'll be in a lower tax bracket, so you'll have to pay less taxes. That's not the reality. The reality is we don't know what tax is going to be, and we assume they're going to be much higher because of the debt that the country is in. And if that's the situation, the only way you can have lower taxes being a lower tax bracket, if you have a small amount of money. That's the only way it's going to happen. If I can look at the next side, please. And these are the rules that governs money. Now, we talking, we're talking about compounding our money over time. Now, this first rule, the rule of 72, compound interest, this guy, Albert Einstein, you guys may have heard of him. Albert Einstein said in the early 19th century that this rule should have been considered the eighth wonder of the world. He said that people that know this rule, they earn interest on money. And people that don't know this rule, they pay interest on money. Now we got we got the young guy coming out of high school, went to college, got a student loan debt, paying interest. Decided to buy a car, got a got a car loan, paying interest. Took a loan out to get married paying interest. Now in a position to want to buy a home, paying interest. As we are paying interest, who is the other side that's earning interest? Other people. And we're teaching families how you can take advantage of this rule, the rule of 72, and allow it to work for you and your household. Now, this is how the rule goes. If you take 72 and you divide it by whatever interest you're getting on your money, it's going to determine how long it takes for your money to double. Now, what do people do when they get their money? They put it in the bank. To save it, use the bank for convenience. But ideally, I thought the banks is the place that you would save your money because I knew nothing else. And what I was talking about, how concepts, how beliefs are passed along, how opinions are passed along, 
how the legs were cut off the turkey and people just did it without questioning why until they find out the pot was too small. And so we're finding out now that there were some rules that's too small for us to really understand how our money should have been working for us all the while. So putting money in the bank is not the place to go if you're trying to save your money. Why? Because the bank will only give you less than 1%. Now, according to this rule, 72 divided by 1, if they gave you 1%, it would take 72 years. I know they got CD accounts. Might give you two, maybe three, maybe four. Depends on how much money you put in, how they can influence you. Five years, you have access to your money. And in that period of time, they'll give you this amount of interest. Ten years, they'll give you this amount of interest. So it's never going to outpace inflation. Understand that. They're never going to give you enough money in one of those type of accounts to outpace inflation. What if you was getting 4%? 72 divided by 4 is 18. It takes 18 years for your money to double one time. We want to put you in a category way on the other side where you can start understanding how if you was earning 12% interest on your money, your money would double every six years. Now think about that. Here we have a 29-year-old in four categories, all starting out with $10,000. Something amazing happens because first column, we don't even want to mention that. 72 years out of the question. 18 years, 4%. At 65, $40,000. 6%, 12 years at 65, $80,000. We're teaching families about 12% and above, but now at 65, this person, just like the other three, started off with $10,000, 29 years old, and now there's $640,000 of it. What a remarkable difference. Well, some people know and some people don't know. That's the first rule, the rule of 72. The second rule is how your money grow. Fixed, variable, and indexed. Now think about this. The growth on your money, how is that working? In a fixed, don't worry about it. It's not going to outpace inflation. In a variable account, it goes up and down with the stock market. I heard somebody say at one time, you might as well go on the roulette table and put it on red or put it on black. You don't know where it's going to stop. Well, same with the stock market. We don't know. We got people pretending they do, but nobody never really know what the stock market is going to do from day to day. But we know that variable in and of itself means unreliable and unstable. And millions of Americans have their retirement account in a variable market, unreliable and unstable. We're changing it. We're showing families how you can put your money in an index strategy that mirrors the market, but when the market goes down, your money locks in place and you never lose your principal or your gain. Index strategy, not an index fund, totally different. Second rule. The third rule is how your money gets taxed. And we know about the tax now system, right? Mutual funds and all of that. You grow any interest, you got to pay taxes again. You pay taxes when you started the account. But if you grow any interest, you got to pay taxes again. That's tax now. Tax later, it's horrible. It's horrible. When you think about it, who came up with this idea, deferring taxes? Don't worry about paying taxes on the seed. Wait until you get your harvest. Now, you think about it. You got a bag of apple seeds, and you have a plot of land, and you're going to start an orchard. But you didn't pay taxes on the seed. They told you, don't worry about that part. We'll wait until you get your harvest. And we'll come along and we'll figure out what the taxes are going to be. That's crazy. But this is exactly how the federal system is set up. If you don't know the rules, you'll be paying taxes and taxes and more taxes. But we're teaching families how you can have tax advantage. Well, now you're learning how to put your money inside of the type of account where it grows at a high rate of interest in an index strategy where you never lose the growth on your money. And when you go to access your money, it's tax free. Now, I'm going to say it one more time. When you go to access your money, it's tax free. 
Let me add the next slide, please. And these, these are some of the ways that we help families. And there's millions of Americans, right? They say 78% of Americans today, 78%, they either have underinsured or no insured. Now think about it. Underinsured or no insurance at all. We're educating families on the proper purchase of life insurance. Why? Because I'm going to explain to you the value of it. Because we're talking about the tax advantages that come with it. We're talking about the protection of everything that you have accumulated, your assets. We're talking about having that protected. We're talking about making sure if your children do decide to go to college, they won't have to be riddled with a student loan debt. We also telling people about debt management because why? America started off in debt. Coming out of high school, going into college. Debt, credit card debt, student loan debt, car loan debt, home on, on and on and on until we get to a place now where we have debt after debt after debt. We're changing that. We're showing families now how you can start now managing your money under those three rules where I just showed you and create a family bank for your family where your money now is working for your family where you're recycling your money over and over and over for your family and you're saving your money now in the right place why because life insurance has been proven i showed you the, those three irs codes those irs codes a couple under the umbrella of life insurance where you got easy access to your money your money grows and it's all tax free the three rules that I just showed you, they all cover with IRS codes. This is what wealthy folks do, where Warren Buffett can say, my employees pay more taxes than I pay, and I'm a billionaire. And you think about that concept. Some people knew the rule, and some people didn't know the rule. And all my life, until I was 64 years old, I didn't know the rule. But we're changing that we're ensuring that working people, hardworking people, raising a family, doing all the right things, went to college, doing all the right things, got a decent job, doing all the right things, raising their children, doing all the right things, except understanding how their money should have been working for them as hard as they had been working for it. And every generation now, because we don't know, got to start off from scratch. Every generation. Got to start off from scratch. Well, do you remember the flip phone when it came out? Man, it was it was amazing, right? We didn't have to use our beeper and then run to a phone booth. Man, we had a flip phone at our ready. And we'd flip it over and make a phone call. And that's what they did. They made phone calls. That's exactly what they were designed to do, make phone calls. And life insurance used to be designed for somebody to die and it would take care of the widows and the orphans. That was the original design, the death benefit. But now, like the flip phone has evolved into the smartphone, life insurance has evolved to life insurance. Where now everything that you're living for is protected. And if you got sick or injured, you now have coverage on your assets that you don't have to foreclose on your home. You don't have to have repossessions on your cars. You don't have to be worried about your utilities being disconnected because you can, you have coverage. Somebody else is bearing the financial risk, just like you might have full coverage on your automobile. You know what happens if anything happens. You're not that concerned about somebody stealing your car other than you being inconvenienced. Because you got full coverage. Call the insurance company. They're going to replace the value of your automobile. Well, we're setting it up. We're showing families how you can set it up where the same principle applies. If something happens to you, call the insurance company. You got protection on all your assets because you set up the right plan to make sure that your family wouldn't suffer financially if you couldn't bring home the bacon. That's one of the sayings I got from, you know, my family, bringing home the bacon, right? And so now look at this, estate planning. 
legacy planning. This is what's this is what's important. You want you want to establish a life where now your children inherit something other than a debt. And you think about that. The index growth on your money has to be in place in order for you to really get the value of your dollar. We have small business owners. Increase their expenses and reduce their taxes because I'm working with some business owners right now. You know what their conversation is? Damn taxes. Damn taxes. Well, we're showing folks how you can use some of the IRS tax codes and get the full benefit of all of your hard-earned dollars and put your money back into your business instead of putting it outside of your business. And then final expense. Well, we know uh, some of the mortuaries, they are worse than those uh, predatory lenders. Take advantage of people's grief, upsize you, upsell you on, on, on caskets and you know everything, all the services that they provide. I remember when my mama passed, my young, the, the baby and I found the younger, younger brother went in there, wanted to be in charge, went in there and he purchased his casket. And we went in, me and my sister went in later and looked at what he had put in place. And, you know, it was looking okay at first till we examined it. And one casket was, they was, they was all a couple of thousand dollars, but this one casket that he had looked at was $4,300. And the other one was like, I think it was 1950 or something like that. And I asked, I asked the, uh, well, what's the difference? This casket, it looks similar to this one. What's the difference? And he was showing me how the gold trimming around the pillowcase, the gold trimming around, you know, the layers of, of the, uh, the coffin, and he tried to be impressive in explaining it to me. I said, man, put that, take that one back. We'll take that one. We're going to close it down. Nobody's going to see those gold trimming inside of a casket, right? Saved a couple of thousand dollars on that. But the idea about it is we got everybody that's taking advantage of our hard-earned money. And when, 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 when the sun set, our pockets are empty. And when I'm talking about the sunset, I'm talking about when you get ready to retire and think you're going to go off into the golden ages, live under the sunset, there's a storm waiting on you. Financial insecurity. Let me add the next slide, please. Where is your money working? Now, I know this is small, but... I'm going to explain it. Comparing five different financial accounts. Now, we talked about the bank quite a bit here because people use the banks for savings. And the bank is not a savings institution. I don't know where that crazy idea came from. Save your money in the bank. They got a savings. A checking account is for convenience. Yeah, I got a checking account. All right, It's convenient for me to be able to navigate through the system and take care of things through a checking account. But savings in the bank, that's the craziest idea in the world. They don't even give you uh, money on your money. So look at look at the areas that you benefit putting your money in the bank. There's no risk of you losing your money. You got easy access to it. And it's protected because they got insurance on your money up to $250,000, I believe it is. So think about that, putting your money in the bank. All the rest of the areas is red. No tax exemption. In other words, you're, if you earn any interest on your money, you got to pay taxes. There's no potential for growth. We talked about the less than 1%. But look at the rest of them, right? No critical illness rider. You're on your own. You have to exhaust all your money if you got sick, right? If you need to go on a long term in a care facility, you'd have to exhaust all your money that you might have in the bank. There's no legacy planted around it. And if you got into some financial problems, your money can be seized. Your bank account can be seized through probate. Put your money, lock your money up and start making decisions about your money until it's all resolved. In the meantime, your account has been depleted because there's some legal fees that's going to go with it automatically. And then we're talking about the traditional retirement accounts. We're used to 401k. Why? 
because it doesn't matter what they call it. They all have the same rules. Deferred comp, 59 and a half rule, the 73 rule, required minimum distribution. They all operate under the same rules. They call them different names. So what's the only benefit? The potential for growth. The potential for growth, not the guarantee for growth. The potential for growth. The rest is all red. There's no tax benefits in that. And they tell us starting off, don't worry about paying taxes. That's the craziest idea in the world, right? The idea behind that was taxes were supposed to be lower. So don't worry about paying them now that they high. We'll wait until they get lower. But this, the debt went up. And as the debt went up, who's going to pay for it? Hardworking Americans. So you got the growth potential, but at risk of losing your money. You know how many people lost their money when they was ready to retire in 2008? Millions of Americans, not a few hundred, millions of Americans were ready to retire in 2008 now still working on jobs, those who are capable of doing so. The rest are just quietly suffering financially, right? There's no easy access to your money. We talked about the 59 and a half rule. No real protection on your money. You don't have any of these other benefits. And your money can be seized. Probate can seize your account. And think of a company go belly up. If a company filed bankruptcy, don't you know they can take your retirement account? Then we go to the Roth IRA. Well, seemed like a good opportunity, a good choice. The first two, you get tax exempt and potential for growth, but the rest is all red. Hmm, isn't that interesting? When a lot of people that I'm talking to are saying, oh, I got a Roth, but that's fine. But it lets me know right away that you are in a certain financial category because you can only qualify for a Roth if you make a certain amount of money. As a single person, if you're making over 135000 you don't qualify. You can't have a Roth. They say you make too much money. As a family, if you make over 200000 you can't qualify to have a Roth. You won't get those tax exemptions, that potential for growth, not with that product. And if you're under that, that requirement, you can only put in so much money. $65,000 if you're under 50, and they give you a little boost. 75000 if you're over 50, get you some catch-up time. But it's still limited. And you can lose your money. Now, you think about that. You see, no risk of loss, that's red with a Roth IRA. No easy access to your money, that's red. And then we get to the fixed index annuity. Now, there are three types of annuities. There's a fixed annuity. There's a variable annuity. Those are the two annuities. When people say annuity, people say, oh, man, I don't want to hear nothing about no annuity. Because... They were only familiar with those two. Fix, you're not growing much money. And in a variable annuity, you may have lost money in that because it's in the stock market, in that place that we call unreliable and unstable. But then the fixed index annuity come along where now you're in a strategy where you'll never lose your money and you have income for life. You can fund it the way you're capable of funding it. But then... There is no tax exemption. You got to pay taxes on it, right? There is no easy access to it because there is a contract, five, 10 years, almost like a CD. Right? Let us use your money, we'll give you, but they give you a much higher rate of interest than a CD account would. That's the benefit in having one of those accounts, right? You got protection on your money. You can have long-term care on this plan and this plan cannot get caught up in probate. But let me talk to you about the last comparison. That's index universal life. And I'm not afraid to say it. it is a life insurance product that is designed to allow you free access to your money, to grow your money the way you're capable of growing it, and to have tax-free money when you go to access it. Index universal life. So I hope and I pray that I had a conversation with you and shared enough information that you don't have to take any action. 
but I want you to think outside the box. I want you to just expand a little bit and start examining what's going on in your world when it comes to finances. Why? Because there's going to come a time if you don't, you won't be able to reverse the process if you were working under the wrong blueprint. So thank you. Thank you, uh, both sides of the conversation, John Henry and your entire crew, man. I don't know if you call them your crew, uh, your crusaders. I don't know how you refer to Mr. Mark. Man, they are the team, brother. They are the team. They are the people. Man, come on. I was going to finish, man. I said that's your... Now, man, come on, John Henry. Let me finish, man. Yeah, I know it's your team, man. It's your squad. But because you know what? I'm honored to be here, man. And I, 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 just, I just hope and I pray that I said something to somebody somewhere that heard enough to start examining their finances while they can. Because... There was a security guard at Bank of America on MacArthur Boulevard in Oakland, 80 years old. Had worked on the job for 45 years. I was like, how's that? Ooh. He had the wrong blueprint. He thought he had it right and found out it was all wrong. And now it's too late to do anything about it. 80 years old, got to go to work. Security guard. So we're changing that, man. And when you say both sides of the conversation, we're changing the narrative. That's what we're doing here. Man, I got Richard Bill here, brother. All right? And so I see you. Richard Bill. Richard Bill, man. I know you came in to alley hoop this brother, man. Go on. Hey, John Henry, how you doing? I'm doing good, brother. Talk to the people, man. Hey, you know, man, John Henry, man, thank you, man, for always inviting us on here, man. You know, when I connected you and, and Brother Agbar there, I knew it was going to be a wonderful connection, you know. And thank you, Mark Scott, for always giving us that information, man. He give you that that lineup and all of that stuff, giving the information to the community, man. We really appreciate you. I want to say that, too. Yeah, man, you know, I thank Agbar for introducing me to the Blueprint, man. I met Agbar about 30 years ago. A long time ago, man, and, and we was out there in what I call have, having that wilderness experience. I think every, you know how the, the children of Israel walked around in the wilderness for 40 years. Well, I was walking around in that wilderness, and, it, and, it, and it's called the Tenderloin. <laughs> it, it, it's 6th Street, you know. And yeah. then we walk out of that wilderness, man, and we come here, man, and we get educated, and we, we come back into our senses, and we get connected with some good people like like uh, Brother Leland Rubin, you know, Eric Olson, you know, giants in the financial industry, they got all kinds of information that is life changing, you know? And so when I was introduced to those people, man, to Mr. Agbar, it was just, it changed my whole perspective when it come down to, to financial literacy, you know what I'm saying? Because I didn't realize that I was financial literate. I didn't realize I was illiterate when it comes to finance because, you know, I got letters behind my name, man. I, I got, I'm a master's registered district specialist. I'm a certified clinical supervisor. I'm a certified alcohol and drug specialist. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a advanced certified relapse prevention specialist. I'm, I've been doing this for 30 years. And you can't tell me, man. You know what I'm saying? That I don't know what I'm doing. You know, because I'm, I'm a professional. I used to supervise that, you know what I mean? And then he started supervising, educating me, and he gave me some information that really changed my life. You know, so I'm always uh, supportive of Agbar and what he's doing. I'm a licensed agent now. I'm working in the field now. And I'm proud to say he's my mentor. You know, he's my mentor, him and Brother Leland Rubin and the other people that are doing that work, man, and working with families and helping families change their lives. And so I'm always applauding him and everything that he do. I'm supportive. I always connect him and make an appointment. And, man, I see all of these things like, you know, my little brothers and my stepmother passed away had to do a GoFundMe. And I don't never want to do no GoFundMe. GoFundMe is not a life insurance policy. <laughs> you know, all of those things because don't wait until it's too late. You know, and I had talked to people, man, and I still talk to people, man, they good in decent health and then something happened. You never know when some of those life changing things might happen, like a stroke or a heart attack or come up with some type of illness. And now you might not be eligible for that, for that IUL. Or you might not be eligible for some of that stuff. So get it now. Don't wait until you get sick and say, oh man, I need to give me some insurance. 
That's what people, most people be thinking about that after it's too late. You know, after you don't, after, that's like spitting your money, man, and say, I should have bought some food. You know how, you know what I mean? Come on, man. You know, you should have thought about that before you spent your money. You know what I mean? So I got a, a, a grandchild, man. I got I, I got that million dollar baby life insurance policy on my grandbaby. You know what I'm saying? Next month, she'll be three years old, man. You know what I mean? And she, she, when she get grown, man, she gonna have some money. My wife got an IUL. My daughter got an IUL. I mean, I, I fix annuity, all of these things, man. I didn't have that five years ago. Hey, boy, and some other people were like brother the act bar. Now we got some security. Now I know, see this house, you see that my cabinet behind me, I'm sitting in my house right now. You know what I'm saying? But I know when I, when I pass away, and when, if, not, if I pass away, when I pass away, that this stuff, my debt and everything can be paid off. That they're not going to be foreclosing on my house and talking about, oh, now your income ain't coming in and, and all of this. No, you can have it set up when, when you pass away, all of your debt and everything is paid for. All your final expenses, a lot of these policies already come with will and trust. A lot of these policies, you know, people don't think about all of that, but you better think about it now. Why are you healthy? Why are you in your right mind? So, so it won't be all that stress and anxiety and, and all that pressure on your family. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, it's not if it's going to happen, it's when it's going to happen. Man, that's, so, that's very powerful. I always I'm, glad you, you know, you, I'm glad you spoke on it. And you shout out to Leland. And to all of the financial folks that are making impact in our community, changing the, the narrative about the finances in the black community. And, and, and I'm happy because I, I subscribed to this very young and early, and I'm glad I did. You know, I just said last week I was home sick all week. I felt like I was going to die. And I was like, oh, it don't matter. I know I did the right things. I know my daughter, my granddaughter be set up, um, you know, for life because I made the right financial uh, decisions. And I think it's very important. That's why I'm happy that you are here. We are going through an economic crisis in this country. We have people who are working, who are not investing. And I agree with you. There's so many of our elders who are working 30, 40 years and retiring and don't have enough money working at Walmart, working security, trying to make ends meet because they didn't get this information. Community, this is powerful information. Don't just sit here and say, oh, I heard this before. You got to go and check it out. Um, you know, and then, you know, I want to say this, you know, because I didn't really hear you touch on it a lot, Brother Akbar. I want to talk to our entrepreneurs out there. I want to talk to our contractors, our nonprofit folks, folks that run their own businesses, um, because they have advantages um, that working people don't get being an uh, independent owner or entrepreneur. You know, when we talk about these SEPs, IRAs, you know, where folks can put up to $69,000 in there to invest in a retirement. You know, all these folks, you know, talking about they got LLCs and all of this. And, you know, these beauty folks is doing hair and barbers. And, you know, they have an advantage uh, making cash money if they get these type of accounts set up to really secure their future faster uh, than folks that are working. Um, and, and, you know, those are things that we have to really talk about and, and, and really educating our people is important. And I heard you talk about the Roths and I'm always educating people about these Roths and why to pay the taxes up now when you retire, um, how those income penalties don't attack you, right? You you work, you go, you know, say you you know you get to the retirement age, and if when you have that Roth and you take out a hundred thousand dollars to buy a house or buy a car, um, you know, you're not getting hit uh with, with income gains, you know, when you take that money out because you paid it up front. We know in California here, we in California, we know the taxes is only gonna go up. Okay, so those tax deferred accounts are great now. Okay, you don't have to pay the tax down, but just remember when you go to cash out in the future. It's going to hit you big time because it's only going to be an increase. Um, but to speak to Richard, you know, about um, the life insurance, the IDLs and, and protecting our families, I think it's so important. You know, we deal with the communities we come from. When you talked about the wilderness of the Tenderloin, the wilderness of Bayview, the wilderness of the Fillmore, the wilderness of all of the American urban communities and ghettos of America. When we talk about death, the loss of life, young people, grandmothers, families, it's going to happen. And I agree with you. I'm so tired of seeing GoFundMes and five food dinners and fish fries and chicken fries trying to pay for the funeral. Um, these um, policies and this information that you all are giving is so accessible. 
you know, and it's a programming that need to happen in our community. There's a narrative shift. There's a, a, a paradigm shift that has to happen when we look at finances. We'll pay for cell phone bills. We'll pay for car insurance. We'll do everything. But when it comes to life insurance, we're not there. And we got to really encourage our community. It's the fastest way to pass generational wealth. And I don't know what it is about our community. You know, some folks is, oh, this is if I get life insurance, I'm jinxing my life or, you know, some of these uh, things that come out. Uh, we have to find a way to encourage these folks. You know, I'm always telling folks, whatever policy you could get that can help impact your legacy, leave something for your future, we must do it. Whether it's a whole life policy, I'm always telling folks, just get a, 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 a fixed income policy. Um, you know, like a, 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 I keep saying whole, I'm whole life, but I'm talking about um, the other life policy. It's, I'm losing my mind right now. But um, where you don't have to do all of the medical clearance stuff, um, you know, the term, term policy, there it goes, term policy, um, where you can protect yourself for a low amount of money with a high bang. I mean, I'm looking at some of the term policies that they have out there. Folks are paying 59 to $89 a month for a million and a half dollar policies. Like that's not an excuse. Our cell phone bills are more than that, you know, and, and when I'm talking to families about budget, I just was dealing with a situation today with some folks, um, you know, we, we have to condition to change the condition of our mind, how we think about money, how we think about our financial futures, you know, depending on government uh, assistance. It's just not working. And, and I, I'm like, when I hear this from my people, it just it, it drives me uh, uh, insane. And, and, and I'm glad that you all are here because we have folks out here who don't want to stay on section eight they they want to stay on social services they want to get general assistance i mean they're not thinking about the impact that they can have to invest in their future um so it's important um that you all bring this information to our community and and really show the community what it looks like you know and and, and as you said richard you've been in the game for a long time akbar you know we have to encourage our young people our young families the young mothers and fathers to retain this information and act. See, it's one thing to get the information, but if we don't start acting, we have to act now, community. When I look at the financial reports, when I look at the treasury reports, what's going on, when you look at the wealth, okay, these financial folks, these CEOs of these large banks, these financial institutions, they understand the numbers. Black and brown communities are in trouble in 2053. I mean, trouble. When they look at the wealth of Black Americans, I'm glad you said that. It's we in trouble. I'm glad and you said that don't again because hey, Bart, talk. Go ahead. I'm glad Rick, you said ahead. that uh, about the Black. I'm glad you said that about the Black and Brown community because that's you know I still do healthcare too, and, and I'm gonna tell you when it comes to our Black legacy and also our Black lifespan, you know, it's shorter than everybody else. So you need to start as soon as possible. You know, uh, unfortunately, you know, I'm always finding people that have passed away and now they got a lot of stuff going out there, man. They got the COVID, they got the RSVP, they got everything going out. And then we struggling, a lot of people struggling with that fentanyl and other addictions. You know, it's just really bad, especially on the black community. We are affected more than any other race. Our lifespan is shorter than any other race. So we really need to pay attention about passing down the legacy. And like you said, John Henry, the best way to pass down generational wealth is with this, is with life insurance. You know what I'm saying? And also you need to, we need to teach people about, like he said, how money grows, how money works, you know, how, you know, the, uh, you know paying all these interest with these credit cards, man, I've been in credit card hell. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And you don't have to stay there. You can do, like he said, debt management, debt consolidation, all of that, man. And don't wait. People just think, oh, I can do that later. Like, next thing you know, man, like he said, in a blink of eye, he was 41 minute, next minute, you 60. Look at us now. You know what I'm saying? And like you said, we need to pass this along to the people that's coming up behind us, two or three generations, so they can understand now that, you know, don't just take a job and, you know, Find out what's going on uh, uh, at your job. Even if you're going from one job to another job, understand that if you had some type of medical coverage stuff, a, a medical insurance, or even if you had group insurance, that you got what they call conversion insurance. You can convert. You you got 30 days to change that into another policy without showing insurable interest. 
That, in other words, you ain't got to do no medical exams and things like that when you leave one job and go to another job. People don't, you got 30 days. You got 30 days when you can call up that insurance company and say, you know, I want to keep that. As a matter of fact, I want to change it to another policy in my name. I don't want group insurance, but I do want some more insurance. And as a matter of fact, I wanted this. And they, you ain't got to do no medical exam. You ain't got to do nothing. And that's a lot of people don't realize that. They just take that little Cobra plan, that little HR stuff packet they give them, and don't even read half that stuff, man. And, read and I, all of that stuff in the HR. Read everything, man. And that, that's big right there because a lot of us go from one job to another, man, and just let the health insurance go. Just let yeah. the insurance packet go and don't do nothing with it. And, yeah, if, and, I can, and, if I can add something to that. Go ahead, go ahead brother. If, yeah, I just want to add a little something to that. And it's a sad truth that most of uh a lot of i won't say most i say a lot of uh our community people black and brown are disqualifying themselves from having mm -hmm. the opportunity to even access one of the plans that can you know uh start that generation of wealth and you know just by the behavior you know so you know just addiction right you know i've had people uh decline you know trying to get them protection straighten out their life they had an addiction then five years the company just reject that they think it's you know it's high risk they're not going to give them living benefits they're not going to give them the cash value you know you refer them to some other kind of plan where you're talking about maybe a term with no living benefits you know but the reality is we're talking about trying to put in position people who are now consciously aware that there is a formula right i never knew that there was a different option that I could have chose to have my money in a place that was going to serve me and my family. If I ever had a financial emergency, I wouldn't have to go get in debt. If I ever had a financial emergency, I wouldn't have to pull everything that I have been saving in my bank account to put it on that. It's just crazy. It's a simple formula, man. And it's on the umbrella of life insurance. We want to change how people think about life insurance. It's like that impending doom that I'm going to die. Forget about that. It's about living. It's about the value now of what you got in place to ensure your family is going to be protected if something happened to you. I got a letter. I got a letter. It's, it's from uh, Life Insurance, and it says I may not seem important now. And this is not this is not verbatim, right? But just a minute. I may not seem important now. I'm silently waiting my opportunity to step up when you can't take care of your family when you're unable to. That's what life insurance does, right? Yeah. Well, go ahead. But I want to say this, and I think this is why it's so important that you come here at a community level, um, because we got to educate people differently about life insurance, right? We have to change the thought process of it. And we have to, and this is what I'm saying, whether it takes a term, hold, whatever it is, we have to have our personal life insurance, before we work for companies, because what I'm seeing, this is just me and you could, you guys are in the coaching folks and seeing it. What I'm seeing is a lot of folks, like you said, um, losing those benefits because of the transition of the economy right now. Here in the Bay Area, over half a million people have been laid off over the last couple of years. Right. So when they work with these companies, they give them life insurance. So they walk around. Hey, I'm working with this company. I got life insurance. I got this. I got that. All the benefits. Why they with that company? But then when they get laid off or they lose the job, all the benefits go. Now, when you maybe started the job younger, you didn't have all the health conditions or the issues. Now you're older and it's harder to obtain. How important is it to make sure that we have our personal life insurance outside? Because that's something that I always did. My job gave us insurance, but I always kept my own policy outside because I knew if there's a transition issue that you had that in place. Um, just in case, you know, something happened. And we we, we have to continue to push this um, in our community so that they understand um, the importance of having it, having it personally and making it a part of their monthly budget. When we talk about this financial literacy, when we talk about the debt that Richards is talking about. The number one, the new slavery has been debt. It's taken over incarceration. When you look at the millions of people that are in financial debt who have to go to work to pay off the debt, who have to do the thing because they're financially um, in ruin. Um, they're calling that the new slavery. They said debt is now worse than mass incarceration. I mean, without the, the presence of physically removing yourself from the community, um, people are not responsible. 
Um, people have outstanding debt. And I think we have to go back to the basic pieces of eliminating some of the credit cards, going back to the basic financial steps of saving, having emergency funds. Most families, um, they say, uh, get in debt um, within the first three months of a major emergency, whether it's a car accident, time off of work. Most folks can't recover from that because they don't have the financial savings or the financial means to get out. So typically they use a credit card. Oh, once I get well, I'm going to get back to work. Now you, 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 you in financial ruin, you can't keep up. Um, how important is it? Um, I'll ask both of you. When we start talking about income um, protection, income protection, some of the things that come in these packages, is that some of the stuff that's in these IDLs and things that you all are proposing to the community? How do folks protect their income if they get injured, become ill, or short-term disability? Is that built into those IDLs and those plans that you all are offering? It can, it can be, right? Typically, they set up like that. The purpose for them is to secure you and your family financially. And what we do, we structure the policy where now, whatever it is that you have in assets, right? Whether it's a million dollars, $2 million or 500,000, we want to make sure that that is covered in that plan. Some people don't worry about that as much as they want their cash value to increase. You see, so when a cash value is the primary purpose, then the death benefit is going to be lower. But when you're talking about the proper protection to ensure that your family is going to be taken care of, we teach families, right, how to purchase proper insurance to secure your family. It says that you should have, if you if you are the breadwinner, you should have a life insurance policy that's going to cover seven to 10 years of your annual salary because there's two ways that people die expected and unexpected now expected you know we got loved one they've been suffering for a lot of years health been deteriorating now they on the hospital bed they are in hospice we know it's expected any day now right uncle leroy is not going to be with us right so we go you know we sit around you know we pray you know, and then Uncle Leroy transition, you know, that's it. It was expected. But George was on his way home on a Friday evening. And a drunk driver ran into him, killed him instantly. Unexpected. Family is waiting on him at home. He is supposed to get there so they can sit down and have dinner. Unexpected death. Well, now... What happened to the family? He was the breadwinner. Did he have enough coverage to make sure that his loved ones now wasn't going to be put outdoors in three months? You know, I got a story I can tell you. Make it short, as short as I can. There was a guy just before COVID that I was working with. 32 years old. He was a uh, electrician making great money for an employee. Right? And we was going to get him a cut, a plan in place, and it was just around Thanksgiving. And he had just bought this beautiful home, and he was telling me, man, listen, let me get past the holidays, man. I love this, man. Three kids he had, a lovely wife, newlywed, just bought a house, wonderful job. Everything was going. The guy was 32 years old. And right after the holidays that he was supposed to, put everything together. Guess what he told me? Man, I had family come from out of state. Man, it was bigger than I thought it was going to be, man. Give me a little time just to get out of debt. And let me pay down some of these bills, man. And uh, we're going to get that thing going. Right? This was January we're talking. February we come along. I'm revisiting with him. Yeah, man, I'm just about ready to get it moving. Around February the 9th, he got ran on, on um, Highway 1. Car ran into him on the wrong side of the street. Killed him instantly. He had one of his children in the car with him. They got head trauma, right? Uh, still struggling with that to this day. His, his wife was a stay-home mom with the three kids. Never worked. He had a great job, right? And everything was dependent on him, and he didn't have it planned in place. You know, it broke my heart because COVID came along right around that time. 
And that saved that family from being homeless. The cars got repossessed, but they didn't get put in the street because COVID came along and they put that moratorium in place. But the reality is, man, this guy was so excited about living, right? And he saw the vision about this plan protecting. I said, man, I said, this is crucial, brother. I said, you need to get something, right, with some living benefits over your family. Man, I love it. He said, but I want that cash value. I was talking to him in terms of just get a term policy with living benefits until you can get the IUL, right? Let's get it started because that's simple. It'll be quick, right? Man, listen, I'm going to get the IUL. He was he was stuck on that. And, you know, I can't make nobody do anything they don't want to do. So we're not like that. But I was constantly reminding him, hey, man, listen, get something in place. And that's what happened. Unexpected. So I, I got a quick question before I turn it over to Mark, um, because I know we got folks watching in the community. I want to role play here today. You know, I, I like this this new thing that I'm doing, role playing with the guests, asking questions, right? So I come to you. Okay, I'm John Henry. I come to you, Brother Akbar. You're talking about the unexpected uh, death insurance. I want to know, as an employee, I'm working, I'm making so much money. How much percent is my gross income should I be uh, putting up? for my policy? What percentage of my money should go to my life to, to cover me and my family? Well, typically a minimum of 10%, but you can put more in. But what, what we do with families, right? Because we know people already in got in debt, regardless of how much money people make. And I'm working with a couple of doctors right now, living from paycheck to paycheck, beautiful home, beautiful car. They just got a higher standard. They pay more money. And, you know, so they, they in debt too. But what we do is sit down like I did when I worked in treatment, when I worked in mental health, when I worked in healthcare. We sit down with a, an assessment to find out where people are. Well, we do a personal financial review to find out where people are, where you are in your debt. How much money do you have after all of your expenses? Right. And with that money, we show you how it could be working for you if you put it here and give you an illustration of how that can perform for you over time. And people make their own decisions. And that's generally how we get started, Mr. John Henry, is showing people where they are, right? How they've been spending. I, I had a lady I was working with, she's spending $600 a month at the beauty salon on hair and nails. And she thought $200 was too much. <laughs> Priorities out of place. And we're helping people gradually because, you know, I used to work in a place where we meet people where they're at. And it's the same, it's the same concept here. We got to meet people where they're at. We want to take them to a different way of thinking, right? Just like with life insurance. People think about oh, man, I don't want to talk. You know, it's about death, but it's not. It's about life. Right. So we we would help you understand how you've been spending your money and how somebody else is making money off of everything you've been spending. All your money is going to somebody else. And we want to we want to reverse that and show you now all that incidental money that you got going out to Starbucks. Right. And, you know, think incidentals. We can put it in some essential areas that's going to secure your family. And you determine how much you want to do that. OK, I'm just going to take the numbers. I'm just trying to figure it out. So thank you, Brother Akbar. We're going to go with the 10 percent. I make one hundred thousand dollars a year. So 10 percent is what you said. I should have minimum life insurance. So I should be getting me a million dollar policy to cover my hundred thousand dollar salary. So for 10 percent of my gross. Well, that's that's not the, all what he said. That's no, not no, I know. Thing. I'm just, I'm just, I'm yeah. just role playing this out. So hundred thousand dollars. I'm saying if I'm going to give up 10 percent of my hundred thousand dollar salary. For life insurance, I should be mm -hmm. getting a million dollar coverage. I agree with you. I usually tell people 12 to 15%. You make $100,000, you should have a million and a half uh, dollar policy. You make $150,000, you have a hundred eight. One point eight to two million dollar policy. You could do it, right? You want to cover that that loss up so that, you, like you said, your family still could make it. Now I'm coming to you. I'm new. I don't know. I like you said. I'm used to going to a bank. I had Wells Fargo. I had Chase. I got my money in this account. I'm coming to you all because I want to do this IDL and I want to do some of these investments. Where's my money going? I asked you the question. Is it a bank? I know you had these policies. Where do these policies go? Where do I? How do I access my funds? With a phone call. Just make a phone call and let them know where you want to deposit it to. Ain't no rent, ain't none of that other stuff about you got to wait, you got to qualify. You don't have to do any of that. That's your money. 
And this is what we want to emphasize. You have set up a plan for you and your family. Therefore, unlike the traditional retirement accounts where you going to get penalized if you try to access your money, you're going to get taxed if you try to access. None of those rules apply. It is your money set up by you. And if you ever need some of your money for whatever reason, you don't have to tell nobody why. Just hey, listen. I need $4,000 deposit to my account, or I need $4,000 transferred here. And uh, how soon can you get it done? 28 to 44 hours. I had it done the next day. Right? It's your money, man. You got control. And that's the whole idea. We want people to understand there is a system set up where you can control. You can be in charge of how your money grow. You can be in charge of how you make it happen for you. And you determine how you want it to look. Right, now, you know, you've been wasting brother, brother Akbar. You know, I mean, in the past, things have happened to me. I put money in my house, it came up missing. Now, you're telling me I'm putting my money over here, it, 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 you know, in the bank. They say they secure me for $250,000. You're telling me you're sending the money to this plan. I mean, is, is there an address? Is there a location? I mean, where, where's my money going to be at? I need to, like, I, I can walk into Wells Fargo, Jay, but, but these plans you offer is so great. You know, I want to do this, but but I, I for my comfortability, like I need to know, like, do I get an ATM card? Like, how does this work? Well, you know, you know, that's an interesting point that you're making. You know, I've had I've had folks because th this thing is not tangible. What we're talking about is not tangible. I had a guy that I was trying to help him with all of my spirit, and he went he went to Atlanta, Georgia, spent forty five hundred dollars right, on the carrot bar, came back with a piece of paper, right, and you know, all, of, all of that stuff he did, right, because it was tangible, right? So he thought because it was tangible, it was more beneficial. It depends on the company, man. We got life insurance companies, you know, they got different offices in different places, you know, but it's not like you got to walk into it, right? You set up a system, right, and everything is done primarily online now. You set up a system. You got contact with the companies through phone. You can go down to a, a, a one of, one of the offices if you want for what though. You know, you know, we don't do that brick and mortar as much as we used to, right? But the idea about it is, it is yours. And you know, historically, insurance companies is the only institutions that have not failed, even during the Great Depression. It was the system that people relied on to get out of there. And all, all the institutions that had cash value life insurance survived the Great Depression. So Some, I, I, I hear you. I trust your plans. I'm just I'm just old school. I grew up differently. And, and you know, I just want to know because I want to be able to go in there and, 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 and tangibly feel it and see it. Um, so that was my concern uh, with that, you know. And, and, and then I, I want to get into these policies and, 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 and understand, like, you know, um, one thing is for sure. One thing is for sure, John Henry, is that it's very important that the IUL and the policies are set up correctly, because it depends on what you want to use that 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 money for. Just like you said, if you want a death, if you want it for your uh, uh, generational wealth, then you want a, a big death benefit. That's the that's the focus. And if you want to build cash value, that would be the focus. It depends on how you want to structure the IUL. You know what I'm saying? And so. If it, it, uh, uh, and that's the key right there. I, all IULs, are, it, it, it needs to fit what you want. If you don't want to be pulling, you don't want to be pulling, if you want a big death benefit and passing that, you don't want to be pulling money out the because the, the, it slows. You don't want to do nothing that will slow down the interest rate or, or anything like that. You want to continue to build up if you just want the big death benefit to pass down to for generational wealth. So it's a big importance on how it's set up. The IUL has to be set up correctly. So that that's my concern because I, I came to you and Brother Akbar, Brother Bill, and you know, I don't really know nothing about this financial literacy, and I'm coming to y'all. And you you telling me now that it has to be set up right, right? And I maybe I don't uh, connect with y'all tonight, but how do I know that the people are with me are, are, are going to set it up right? What are some of those things, the questions that I need to ask to make sure it's set up right, right? I want a little bit of everything. I want cash value. I want a death benefits. I want, you know, interest. I mean, so what what, what are the questions that I'm going to ask? Because maybe I don't connect with you all. Maybe it's somebody else. How 
how do I set this up? How do I give myself the big a big thing though? The big thing though uh, that I always get with the class when I do that that first financial assessment is don't tell me about everything. Tell me because a lot of people we add up we do the financial assessment the first time. You know, it's like sometimes they'll leave out something. Or they have something that don't make any sense. Or they have, you know, uh, it, it don't. The, the numbers just don't add up. And if you don't give me all the right pertinent information, it's hard to set it up based on because everything is based on your income, you know, and your debt. So you got to let us know everything. Don't hide it. Just be transparent. The more transparent you are with what your finances are, the better it is to set up the IUL or any other product. And that's the key right there. You have to be honest about where you're at with your debt, with your income, how you spend your money. Just like he said, if you, and then look at this, a lot of people don't realize how much money they are wasting on food, how much money they're wasting on buying clothes or something they really don't need and how they can take that money and invest it and let it grow. And so when you really look at that financial analysis and you really are honest about how you spend your money, then you can make some financial adjustments. And then we can uh, uh, set up the IUL be better when it's based on your honest assessment. Very important stuff. I'm glad you said that. And then lastly, you know, um, I, and I'm just, I, I like this role playing because I just sometimes, and I, I'm, I'm being both sides of the conversation, playing both sides because we have people in our community that has this fear. When we talk about money in the black community, it's a taboo conversation. It's stigma tied to finances, life insurance. So I'm trying to give this role play for somebody that's out there that maybe is shy, maybe embarrassed, have debt, right? I know y'all trying to say, hey, come right. to us open. We're going to help you. But I like to do this role play so that people could at least be like, you know what? I thought about this and that, right? So I'm trying to make this transition easy for them. We know it works. We know that there's opportunities, but you have to sell it to the people in a way that they can buy it and understand it. And I'm learning from doing this communication work in this podcast. Our people need to see it. I, I need I need you guys' indulgence, brother. I got a I got a situation I got to deal with. Hey, Richard, can you close it out for me? No Absolutely. problem. Hey, John, I love you, man. I'm gonna call you. I love you, brother. Okay. Thank you for being right, here. Peace right. and Right. Okay, Agbar, I got you. See, emergencies happen. See, Brother Agbar prepared no matter what the emergency is. I know he's got right. <laughs> Brother Bill. So, I mean, I, I'm I'm glad that you guys put it in. I know it's getting late. We got to get out of here. But I, I wanted to put that in play. And you answered, you know, the questions the way I wanted to. Because I know people out there in the community, you know, there's so many people talking about these IDLs. They're selling these different policies. And what I'm, I, I'm encouraging people to do this. But, again, it's the information and the education that's needed. Because again, right, you know our people, Richard. You right. can come on here, speak blue in the face and tell them, and they're going to go talk to somebody that don't look like them, and they're going to put them in the wrong policy. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. Right. So I'm trying to set that foundation and understanding so no matter what decision that they make, they have a clear view of what's going on. Because when we talk about these IDLs, and we talk about these policies, sometimes folks don't talk about how these policies don't work, right? You know, we got folks who come home from prison. They can't get life insurance, right? They on parole. It's a time period. Like, these are the questions sometimes that folks need to understand. Hey, what happened if you commit suicide? Do you still get the benefits? What happened if, you know, there's things and clauses that sometimes don't get talked about and then folks have this negative experience with life insurance that they didn't know. Hey, I got this life insurance. Six months later, my son killed himself and they told me I didn't have no money because it was suicide like this is the stuff that we don't talk about and all i'm saying right. is while we hear this is the information that we have to really uh educate our community some whole life policies if something happened you can't use them for three to five years right you get this right. policy you got to hold it for five years but they don't tell you in five years the premium you started off in five years it might be seven times the premium cost right so what happened most most minority folks in the black and brown community, whole life policy, they elapse. By the five-year occurrence, they elapse. Why? Because the cost of the premium outsees the cost of the uh, monthly charges. 
So those are the things that I want to make sure that we educate our community about and talk about those things because sometimes that don't happen. And then you hear folks say, well, I did everything. I had my trip. My son got killed, John. And I went down and they told me I didn't have a policy for for five years. So it's not there. Right. Because the details is in those little 10 point (laughs) writings on the bottom. If if you die within five years of this policy. And that's all I'm trying to do is just make a fair analysis for folks out in the community that said they know. No, because again, we are dealing with people, our people, black and brown people who are traumatized from the systems that are in place that's supposed to advance us and impact us. And if we don't talk about those things to watch out for, we get folks who selling our folks mutual funds and getting into things that's going to take more majority of their money. And that leaves a negative experience on the folks who want to invest. And this is why it's important to educate the community about these different policies, why you won't index, what is the benefit and what is not. So I appreciate y'all coming on here and speaking to that. Because when I talk to people about investments, I'm just telling you, I tell them, make sure your portfolio is 60 to 70% index fund on your retirement. Don't get caught in these mutual funds because you're going to pay the maintenance fee, the account management fee. Over time, those fees sometimes are half of your investment. People don't know that. They go, oh, all this time I'm looking at my, I had a lady tell me, John Henry, I looked at my policy. I I had $890,000 in there, the balance. I go to cash my policy out. They take $400,000 in service fees. I didn't understand it, but I saw this balance. You get what I'm saying? This is why we got to educate the people right so that they understand. We have to do that. And I appreciate you guys being transparent, being open today to talk about these variable accounts, these index accounts, because I want my folks, people out there listening, go talk to your HR. The purpose of tonight's educational Thursday is I'm trying to intentionally disrupt the brain at night to make somebody go, oh, you know what? I didn't think of this. Let me call my HR in the morning. I want my people in the community. I'm tired of seeing my hardworking blue collar workers work 40 years to retirement and find out they don't have enough money. I want to educate some people tonight. I want to shake them Okay, to some sense, and that's what you all are doing tonight, Richard. I want them to pick up the phone tomorrow. Say, I gotta call Richard Bill. I gotta call my A HR. Hold on, want- HR lady. <laughs> I mean, that's what we gotta do, Rich. I gotta wake my people up because they don't know. We're going to work. I'm telling you, I work with these people, I've talked to these people. And they go, John Henry, I didn't know. I, I never put no money in it. I just, I just heard my employer say they're taking 8% of my income and they put it in retirement. I thought that was enough. I didn't know. I didn't know I was supposed to put my money in there. And, and this is why it's important, Richard, that you guys come here and give that information. Because they need right. to know, no, 15% of the money that you making on top of the 8% that your company give, you got to put it in this account too, so that you have enough money to retire. You got to make sure that the umbrella account that you are is heavily funded in index account so that you have the money in the future because index funds always win at the end. Index funds always win at the end. And understand that 40, 40, 40. You know what about the 40, 40, 40. They've been saying that you work 40 years, 40 hours a week, and then they, they take 40%. <laughs> you, know, you, you better know. Hey, you better understand, like you said, that tax deferred, man. Those four three bs and those four one ks man. Don't put all your money up in there, man. Don't do it. Find the index when you can get paid interest at 10%, 12%, man. So that's so when you do it, so it ain't like he said, if something happens, no, it's not an if, it's when. Something going to happen. The older you get, something going to happen. I didn't have diabetes then. You know, and so I had to realize too, man, that, you know, those rollovers, man, a lot we didn't mention, we didn't talk about rollovers, but you can roll your money over. Over now, they'll give you a 25% bonus. They give you 25,000 bonuses and 30,000 bonuses for rolling your money over. You can roll your money over into a better product and then get paid to do it. (laughs) You know, so understand that too. And the first thing that you really need to do is be careful who you work with, like you said, John Henry, because the first underwriter is the field underwriter, which is the agent. Get some, get an agent that has some knowledge and that you can trust. Because even before it goes to the, the insurance underwriter, the agent is the first underwriter, the field underwriter. And it goes first by the information that the agent puts down on the paper and turns into the insurance agent, into the insurance company. 
So make sure that the person that you work with is somebody that, you know, that has integrity. Man, that, that's deep. But I'm going to go ahead. I know Brother Mark been sitting there. I know he got some questions burning. Uh, and maybe you can answer these before we get out of here. But I want Mark to go ahead and, and give you some of what he's thinking. Because I know he got something he's been holding on to. I, I'll be quite honest. Um, I don't think there's a question I could ask because there, there's been such great information that has already gone out. For me, I, I think one of the biggest keys, and, and because this is a, a – a, a, cultural conversation for our community for some reason until we just get mad enough about something we don't take action and for generations insurance has been used as kind of a a, a, a shell game for building wealth it, it's almost like when they made it illegal for us to read because they were hiding the knowledge and the information and now that we can read it's like we don't eat, we, we can't even get past survival mode or just turning up and having fun that we don't see the importance of investing into our own financial security and legacy. And I, I'm just hoping that something from tonight's podcast will spark, make somebody in the community mad that they'll start investigating and start really taking their own financial future serious because, again, nobody's coming to save us. These tools are available to everybody, but they're not going to just, you know, ain't, the bank ain't going to tell you, hey, instead of depositing your money here, go, no, go over here down the street and put it into this policy. Nobody's going to do that for us. So we have to save ourselves. Brother Bill, thank you for, for being a champion in this. And I hope that you continue to shine the light on this very, very important topic, brother. Thank you. And, thank and you. Mark, Mark, let me say this to the community that's watching, to, to you all that's here too. I did the test. This is how I know what, Bill, what Richard Bill is saying, what Brother Akbar said is true, okay? When I learned majority of the CEOs of banks, financial institutions, 1% earners, all had their retirement investments in index-funded accounts, mm -hmm. right? I learned this. I, I pay. See, this is what I tell people. I learned financial literacy because I had to pay for it. Y'all getting it free tonight. Y'all getting game free tonight. Mm -hmm. I went out there and I test. I went to Merrill Lynch. I went to Fidelity. I went to Charles Schwab. I went to all these people. And I would ask them. I say, hey, I'm a new investor. I want to get in here and I want to invest. What kind of accounts you have for me? They never once mentioned an index funded interest account, investment mm -hmm. account. They never mentioned it. So. The guy was like, oh, I got a mutual fund. You can get this. You can get that. All these plans that I could invest in, CDs, money markets, all of this stuff. I said, I wait till he finished. I said, hey, you know what? I don't want none of those accounts. I want an index funded account. His eyes got big because he knew, hey, this guy knows something. Why is he asking for this? Oh, oh, well, we don't we don't really offer this. We, I, I have to connect you with somebody. I said, wait a second. I can't get access to well, we have it, but but you gotta they won't even tell me about it. I said, Oh, so I gotta talk to somebody else, sir. Cause that I knew what that meant. Hold on, we only selling you this because we want to make money off you. Oh, he knows right. he about index funded account. So instantly he had a whole change of praise off. Oh, well, I can get you. I said, Well, hey, if you can't offer me what I want, because I got I got money, okay. I said, I want to invest. I got $50,000 that I moved from one of my accounts over here, and I want it all to go into an index fund account. And he was like, oh, we, we can do it, but I, I, I got to make a fund. <laughs> and I knew there. I said, we have a problem. And this is when I knew financial literacy was very important because the wealthy of the wealthy folks, 90% of those wealthy folks, every bank, I did the research, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Citibank, PMC, every CEO that they did interviews and investigated. The question that the interview asked them, where do you have your money invested? Every one of those CEOs said, oh, all of my money is invested in index funded accounts. Mm -hmm. The guy said, you are the CEO of this bank, all of your retirement, all your investments in index funded. But when a person comes off the street in here, you guys don't offer that. And he goes, oh, well, you know, people have to ask, you know, me. I said, wow. So that's what I knew. So to in order to hide information from folks. This is the things that they do. Now, there was a guy who was on the side of me. I heard them mention it to it. So this is why I say there's still disparities and racism and in investments. 
because they all asked him. He said, you know, you could do some index stuff. And I was like, man, I caught it, but I didn't go, hey, why y'all? But this is the things that we we need to know. And that's why it's important that you all are here tonight to let our community know, to give them the questions. So when they go and talk to somebody, hopefully they reach out to you, Rich, and the Akbar. But if they decide to go their own merry way, we want to give them the foundation, the questions to ask. I want index. I want my portfolio. When they sell you this portfolio of, the, of, of all your stocks and mine, they're going to put you in this package. Community, make sure 70% of your portfolios are index funded accounts. Make sure you have life insurance. Make sure you have these things in place if you want to leave a financial legacy. Make sure you reach out to a state planning lawyer. I heard Akbar say a majority of people wealth is lost in probate court. You have to have a will in a trust. My black people out there. I always hear people, I got a will. A will, a will could be overturned uh, by a trust. In court. Yes, it can. I'm just telling you. So community, for the people who has a little financial savvy, please see a estate planning lawyer. Make sure you have a will in a trust so that probate court can't contest the two. And you leave generational wealth to your family. Right. And it don't have to be, you know, in the challenge that we are, it could be somebody that say you owe me money. It could be, it could be a neighbor saying, hey, that guy uh, stole my, you know, hey, he sold me a car and the car wasn't good. And he told me he was going to give me this and that. And, and, and we had this transaction going on and I need my money. That right there can send you into probate. Man, that right all there the can time. send you into probate. You know what? You know what I did when I set mine up for my daughter, my granddaughter? I set it up for them. The only thing I said is if I ever get married, you got to split it with my wife, right? But I, what I said is if anybody can test this will or this trust why I die, they only get $1. <laughs> you see, that's how you deal with it. So it don't matter. I had to, I had to protect my daughter and my granddaughter because I told her, I said, everybody said they love you now, baby. Why the bishop is alive? Oh, we love you, dad. We would never take it back. I said, girl, when I die, <laughs> somebody going to come in there and try to get to, hey, hey, my brother said this. My uncle said this. Hey, the bishop said he was going to leave me something. So I, I set it up. I set it up so that anybody could test what I put down on paper because this is what I want. They only mm -hmm. get a dollar. So they might win. Oh, I won. You only get a dollar. Everything goes my grandbaby. All right. So with that being said, I know it's late, Rich. I know you got to get to the family before we let you get out of here. I want to give you an opportunity to give any shout outs to anybody or any parting words to the community before we go. I know it's getting late, uh, but we want to make sure we give you an opportunity to give some parting words uh, to the community. And I know the Peacock Lounge got some amazing events. So make sure you let the people know what's going on with the Peacock Lounge. We'll get oh, some yeah, we got it. Go ahead, brother. Oh, the Peacock Lounge, the oldest black owned uh, club in the film, oh, right there at 552 Hay Street. Tomorrow is going to be Nisi Living Single and the Obama Band. You know, tickets are on Eventbrite right now. You can buy a ticket for tomorrow night. You know, also, we're doing a fundraiser for our very own London Nicole Breed. It's going to be May the 2nd. We know that uh, uh, John Henry and and Mark is going to come out and support the fundraiser right there at the Peacock. The mayor going to be there shaking hands and, and, and telling her, telling everybody about, you know, what we're going to do to win this next election. And so please come out to the Peacock Lounge uh, tomorrow night. We got events on our website, on Eventbrite. You can uh, uh, connect to the Peacock Lounge. But big shout out to, to my mentor, my marketing director, Mr. Salad, who did Akbar. Big shout out to my EVC Leaving Ruben, big shout out to Eric Olson, you know, uh, Global Financial Impact, you know, the agents that come from Global Financial Impact have a level of integrity. You know, so like John Henry was saying too, it's very important about the people that you work with, because you know, you walk into Mary Lynch and you walk into one of those other places and they don't have that same relationship that you have with, that you know with somebody like me or Agbar that's gonna come from a level of integrity and also wanna help our people. So, you know, connect to us. John Heary know how to get in touch with me. He know how to get in touch with Agbar. So I am hope I'll hear from y'all soon. And anybody, it don't matter how old you are, uh, what type of uh, uh, health issues you got, you need to set up for your will and trust. Anybody can get a will and trust. And all the policies turn a uh, whole life. All of them can get a will and trust connected to it. So you need to know that, no matter what your issues are. Man, well, we thank you, brother, for being here. 
Uh, keep doing the work. You are changing the narrative. You are a narrative shift maker. Uh, we're trying to change the paradigm of financial literacy in our community. We want to see a leg living legacy uh, for the next generations. We talk about life insurance. We are tired of seeing GoFundMe. We are tired of seeing chicken fried dinners and fish dinners <laughs> to bury fish. our loved ones. Community, I've had enough. I'm tired of buying popcorn to bury your people. Go reach out to Richard Mann. Reach out to Get some insurance. Scared money don't make no money. We got to do something different in 2024 with our finances community. You must respond. Pick up the phone. Reach out to Brother Akbar. Get some life insurance. Protect the babies. Leave some generational wealth. With that being said, Brother Bill, thank you. I'll see you at the Peacock Lounge. We'll be up there having a good time, living a life, celebrating. That's the right. San Francisco, thank you for being here, brother. We'll see you soon. Thanks for showing up tonight and educating our community. Hey, thank you, John Henry. Thank you, Mark. Man, you already know. All power to the people. I'll see you in the community, good brother. All right, there y'all have it, community. I know it's been long. I know it's been a while. Y'all ain't heard from the bishop. I'm waking up. See, it's something about the end of the show. All of a sudden, I got all this energy. Scared money don't make no money. You got to spend some money. Don't be scared. Make the investment. Financial literacy. We gave you some free game tonight. Take this information, community. I don't want to buy no more two-piece dinners. I don't want to buy no more snapper. I don't want to pay no more GoFundMe. I need my people in the community to understand we all have an appointment that we can't cancel. We all have to meet the maker at some point. Please don't leave your family stranded. Give them something. Give your grandbabies, give your children an opportunity so they don't have to work hard. Set them up right. Give them a 529 account. Set up their college. Don't wait on scholarships. Find a way. We can do it, community. Everybody got Birkin bags. Everybody got red bottoms. Everybody got Gucci belts. Everybody's walking around with 15 iPhones. $89 a month, community. $89 a month. You could get a $2 million term life insurance to protect you and your family. $89 a month. Let's do it, community. We have to prioritize our important things in life. Life insurance is one of them. Investments is another. Tomorrow, wake up angry, community. Go to work tomorrow and say, I need the HR person. Give me the HR person that's handling my stuff. I want to know about my retirement. Where is my money at? I need some angry people out there. I need some people that's excited. Tonight, you should go, you know what? I really need to look in this. Where's my retirement? I'm five years away from retiring. Maybe it's 10 years. I don't know where you at. Call your manager. Where's the HR people? Where's my 401k at? Who has my money? We got to get involved. We got to be on top of our money. Don't just be out here chasing everybody else, trying to figure out what they're doing, and you ain't figuring out what your money is doing. I don't know. I hope somebody. I hope tomorrow. I want to piss off all my HR workers. Everybody in HR that's dealing with benefits in retirement. I hope y'all angry at me tomorrow. John Henry, why did you tell these people to call us? The line was ringing off the hook. I got 500 employees calling me now. They want to know about this index fund account. They want to know about their... I hope that's what happens. Tomorrow, call your employer. Find out. Don't just go to work and go to work. Call them. HR, pick up the phone. I need somebody now. I want to know where my money is at. I want to know how y'all invested my money. Do I have enough? Hey, y'all heard the brother. 10% minimum. 10% minimum for insurance coverage. 15% of your gross income you should be invested. Make sure it's in a Roth IRA. Pay the taxes up front. I'm giving you the game. Y'all can call me. I'll give you the game too. I don't know. But with that being said, we got to get out of here. Brother Mark. I haven't even got to the benediction. I already lost all my voice. All right. I'm going back in the sink over. Oh, I, I got my UDL. I have my life insurance, okay? If I don't wake up tomorrow, I know somebody's going to be blessed. Okay, I got my, I can die tonight. All right, go ahead, brother. <laughs> Bishop, it is so good to have your energy back, brother. I'm glad you're back feeling better. Um, Tonight was, was such a powerful show. Um, and, and I know for a lot of people, again, community, I, I know we like the excitement. We, we like the drama. We like the entertaining stuff. And when we start talking about money and finances, this is not the sexiest stuff to talk about. But it is probably the most important conversation we need to have as a community. Um, I actually saw a statistic today 
um, when it was talking about corporate profits here for 2023. And, and, and just one of the stats alone, I think Starbucks had over like $24 billion profit for 2023. And if they just took $4 billion out of their profit, they could actually give an $11,000 raise to every single employee that they have, and they would still be sitting on $20 billion profit. And what does that say to me? That this money game, the corporate game, has no moral value. So if we don't take it upon ourselves to protect ourselves and our families financially, nobody's going to do it for us. So get this information, get this game. What, what Bishop dropped on you alone was worth more than the price of admission for anything you could have got tonight. Check up on those index funds. Ask about it because the system is hiding it from you intentionally. And if you don't take this knowledge and apply it, then you can't get it and you can't be mad at nobody but yourself. And when you call those HR people, you find out all your money is in mutual funds, say, oh, no, that's a red flag. Why is all my money in mutual funds? I want index fund. Watch how they act. Oh, but, um, <clears throat> you know, thank you, uh, Brother Mark, for saying that. You know, I got some game. You know, y'all getting it for free tonight. I paid to get this game, so I'm a little upset. I wish I had an Akbar and a Richard Bill when I was 26 years old. And I paid a lot of money to learn this stuff, but I did well for myself. I'm thankful that I did it. It put me in a great position. I can go to sleep tonight knowing even it's sick. <laughs> Somebody's going to be taken care of. With that being said, community, we want to hear from you. We got a couple of more weeks. We're going to bless somebody. I see a few people taking the survey. I guess they heard we're giving away some money. We're giving away some money. I'm not telling you the amount. I want some folks to go on there and take the survey. Tell me what you like, what you don't like about both sides of the conversation. We want to hear from the community. How can we make this platform better? How can we make it more intriguing? How can we make it better? Maybe it's less of me. Go ahead, community. Say, we don't want the bishop here. I don't know. Whatever it is, we want to hear from you. We want to impact our community. We want to make sure that the information, the shows that you all are seeing is a great experience. It's something that you want to tune in and check out. And we're trying to elevate and make it better for you, for our community. So take the survey. Everybody that takes the survey is going into a registration pop. Somebody's going to get picked. Okay, because I want to hear from the people. I'm paying some good money to hear from the people. This is your opportunity to criticize me. Maybe you don't like me. Maybe you don't like the things that we're doing. Maybe you don't like the things that we're talking about. I don't know. Maybe you love everything. Just take the survey. Hey, we love everything. Keep doing what you're doing. I don't know. The information is up there. Please take the survey, Monkey. It's for our Both Sides of the Conversation podcast. We are just reaching out to our community trying to find out how can we be better? What would you like to see? Things that you want us to do, we'll bring it to you and help uplift you because that's what it's all about. But I'm back. See, I was sick. All week. Y'all didn't hear from me. Y'all didn't see me. Y'all didn't even call and check on me. Where's the bishop at? But I'm back now. I'm fired up. Richard and Bill's come. They gave me some energy. Brother Akbar has sparked me. Oh, I got some energy now. I don't know. But with that being said, I'm going to let you all go tonight. Here's the benediction community. Hey, tonight, no other night, but tonight, it is Educational Thursday. You have been intentionally given information that can transform your life. We're talking about finances. I know it's a little taboo. I know it's a little scary. I know sometimes we talk about money. It's like, ooh, I really don't want people to know how bad I've been with money. But tonight, you got an opportunity to be open, be truthful, be honest. Take this shameless shame pill. It's okay. Everybody's not doing the right thing. But tonight, you got some information to change your life, to change your par paradigm, to make sure that your community, your family gets a legacy that's left behind that can inspire, uplift them, change their paradigm. We got to teach this to our young people early. I don't know why I was taken out of school. We got to bring it back. We got to make sure that this information get into our high school. Make sure that the young people are understanding the importance of the dollar, understanding the appointment of investment, understanding the importance of life insurance. We must all find us a state planning lawyer. I don't know where you at. Find someone. Make sure you have a will. Make sure you have a trust. For all my entrepreneurs out there, y'all heard Brother Akbar, make sure you call. Find out about an S-E. P I R A. Y'all heard me? S E P I R A. You can put up to $69,000 a year into your retirement. Working people can't do that. You got an advantage. I know we got a lot of black businesses, a lot of black opportunities, and investors and, and entrepreneurs out there. Check into the SIP. You're an independent contractor. 
Make sure you have coverage. Tonight, you've learned for $89 right here on both sides of the conversation. You could get a $2 million term life insurance. There's no excuse, community. $89. Look at all of the bills that we pay a month. We must make sure life insurance is at the top of our budget. Before we pay the cable bill, before we pay the internet bill, before we put the gas in the car, make sure life insurance is paid. At the beginning of all bills being paid, because it is the important thing to leave generational wealth. You heard Brother Arkbar tomorrow driving to work. You can get hit by somebody and it's over just like that. Tomorrow, you could touch a line and get electrocuted. I don't know. Tomorrow, maybe an android comes falling out the sky and crush you. I don't know. Make sure you protect the community. Insurance is real. Because I'm telling you from the bishop, I'm not buying any more popcorn. I'm not buying any more fish dinners. I'm not paying for any more GoFundMe's. Okay? You have been blessed with the information. There's no reason why you can't bury your loved ones. We cannot depend on our nonprofits. We cannot depend on our city officials. We can't depend on social services to cover the loss of our loved ones. We could do it ourselves. It's a matter of taking action. Tonight, you've been given the information. Take the action. Pick up the phone. Call Brother Akbar. Reach out to somebody. I need some insurance. Cover me now. I guess that's enough. I've been ranting all night. The bishop is back. Thank you all for being patient with me. I'm trying to get my groove back. I don't have a sound bar. My sound bar crashed on me while I was sick. I can't even blow up the spot, Mark. But tonight, we still here. We love you, community. We're doing our part. We want to make sure you get this information. People pay thousands of dollars to get the very information that you learned tonight. Don't be a fool. It's always time for school. Tonight, you've been at the school of both sides of the conversation, the hard knocks, the educational Thursday that's taken off for the people. We'll continue to find the amazing people in the community that have the sauce, the secret sauce the information that will transform our communities. With that being said, thank you, community. Both sides of the conversation. We'll keep uplifting the voices of the people. We'll keep doing our part to change the narrative. Tonight, the narrative has been shifted. Tonight, my community, HR, get ready. All of my HR people, the phones are going to be ringing tomorrow. Everybody's, hey, hey, you know, I was watching both sides of the conversation last night. I didn't know about my retirement. I need some insurance. Where's my insurance? Okay. All right. All right. Y'all can thank me later. But thank you for all tuning in. It's been great. It's been long. I'm back. The bishop is back. I'm back. We're going to have some good shows coming up. I'm looking forward to seeing you all this Sunday. Tune in this Sunday at 4 o'clock. We're talking about the impact of environmental health. You want to talk about the things that impact our community? The environment is the first thing. When you talk about asthma, when you talk about diabetes, when you talk about cancer, it's the environment. We must clean up these environments because these environments impact our health. Mental health is real. Community, find someone you could talk to. There's been dark days. People are being depressed. The economy is shaking, folks. There's war. There's a lot of things to be afraid of. Don't let the impacts of what's going on make you in a dark place that you don't want to be here. We want you. Find the help you need. Mental health is real. This month is my Marty Health Month. We will be talking about health all month. Mental health, man's health, everything. Brothers, get ready. You're going to get a colonoscopy after you talk to the bishop. You're going to get checked up. We're going to make sure the brothers is doing what they need to do. Yes, you're going to be, I don't know. Good evening, everybody. Have a great evening. We'll see you all this Sunday at 4 p.m. Thank you all for tuning up. I am the bishop. See you all later. Good night now.